score down. However, the year before I retire, I'm supposed to fucking score down. Yeah. However, on bikes, you gotta be really hard to regulate the speed and it's single file. jump into the FD content, I wanted to give you guys heads up that one of our most popular designs, which we weren't predicting so many people to like pizza, is officially back in stock, both in the tees, hoodie, and hat. And best of all, with every $5 you spend on lzmfg.com and drifthq.com, you get entered for a chance to win the Mark IV Supra, which we have quite a few updates coming in the next video, along with $20,000 cash. More information in the description. All right, so today is Long Beach practice and qualifying. I'm excited going into today. Uh, we've actually made some changes to the car. So James flew over with like a bunch of Opal power steering pumps, electric power steering pumps, and he absolutely loved it on his car. The team got it put in and it worked really good. So today, Chelsea is trying it. If it works well on Chelsea's car, we're gonna make the switch on my car probably midway through the day too. We just don't wanna go through a bunch of variables and a bunch of cars and have to change them all back. I have a little bit of like power steering shakes. It's not the end of the world, but uh, James seems to be absolutely in love with the electric power steering. So that's that's exciting. But the uh, the strategy today, I actually am one of the first people out for practice, but I made the decision to let other people do laps. We have a ton of practice time, and I feel like most of the practice laps in the beginning get wasted. Before rubber is down on the track, it's literally like driving in the rain compared to once there's rubber down from people burning their tires. It adds so much grip, and the setup and like way you attack the track changes completely. So I'm feeling pretty good going into today. Just gonna take my time, dial my lead lap, get some good chases in, and uh, rather than rushing to get my 12 laps done since we are allotted a maximum of 12 laps of practice, I'd rather take my time and make every lap count.
okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Wait, so get out? You okay, bud? Yeah. Do you want me out or in? Hey, real quick, how do you feel standing up? Um, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I think I jinxed myself by thinking I was gonna get plenty of practice this time. As you guys saw, I just put the car into the wall. Quite honestly, probably one of the worst crashes I've ever had drifting. Um, to kind of give some backstory, I was trying to push to get closer to outer zone three, and all your momentum and speed to get there comes from the transition from uh, your first outer zone through that little chute. So by giving more throttle through there, I built a lot of speed and as soon as I was like halfway to outer three, I knew that I was coming in too hot. So I tried to sear the back of the car against the wall and just put the pedal to the metal. Um, I was able to save the back from going into it, but the spin out, basically when my rear caught the wall, it pulled the front back towards it. I think it was best case scenario in terms of like damage to the car, like it was all stuff that's pretty easily replaceable. Uh, I think the guys will probably have, have me back out in practice soon. But um, definitely got thrown around the car a bit. I'm feeling okay. Definitely not what I want to happen in the middle of practice from a like, confidence standpoint. But I'm feeling pretty good about knowing what I need to do differently. I think the biggest challenge I'm facing is uh, I know how to drive the car the way that I need to drive. I know where I need to put it. But my box to get there is small. So I gotta get everything right the way that it needs to be because you know my correction tool, the handbrake, is a heavy deduction on the lead run, so I'm trying not to use it pretty much anywhere, uh, but that means that I've basically got to be locked and loaded on the perfect line, and um, yeah, I need to do better. in a box. Oh, I'm so happy. Happiness in my mouth. That's <laughs> gonna get clipped. That's gonna get clipped. <laughs> what is this, James? Happiness. In my mouth. <laughs> Eventually, there will be a I said that and it's gonna get clipped. It needs to not sound like I said the actual bad word. Like it needs to sound like a can you edit the H more in post?
after that crash, it took uh, a lap basically to get my confidence back. I was hoping I could just go right out the gate, throw in a ball or run, but I was a little conservative in the area where I hit. Probably a little subconscious action going on there, but I feel like the biggest revelation, um, actually hearing feedback from both James and Chelsea, uh, some of the changes that we've made with the cars this year has made them a lot better to drive, but has actually made them lose grip at full lock. So in the past, when you would just drive the car full throttle, you were rewarded because the car would bury more grip. All of us are kind of realizing that's not the case now. So my last run, which I felt really good on, I basically started not flooring it and just kind of like bouncing around so I had a little more resolution. And it kind of opened up that box that I said felt really small for me because instead of driving full throttle and having very little room to make corrections, I now could either add throttle or pull a little bit away. Um, it sounds like common sense and that's usually how I drive stuff, but it's weird because I, my brain was trained to drive these cars full throttle. Finally figured that out. Now I need to kind of revert back to a little bit of pedal action. Um, but. Overall, the good news is I feel real confident going into qualifying. Could clean up the last section of the track, just to touch and go to the inner clip a little bit more, but uh, that should come pretty easy. It's a simple part. The other stuff's the tricky stuff because you're kind of coming in blind and you can't see the references until it's too late, but um, I found a few tricks that have been helping me, and uh, yeah, just hanging in there. Still a little shook, but um, I'm just gonna go put on the show. LZ leaving the start line. Let's see what he could do in the all-new Ford Mustang. In practice early, he did get into a tussle with a wall. So comes into view, into that first outside zone. Nasty flick. Whoa, buddy. And unfortunately, Adam LZ spins. Obviously, got, this got was a little not sketchy being there. broadcast earlier, Jared, but in practice, when he had that collision with the wall, it was in a very similar area under similar circumstances. Too much angle coming into that section of the course, hit the back and then the front got into the wall as well. Uh, I talked real briefly to Von Ginn Jr. He said, look, like it looks crazy, but this is the way the cars are built. They're completely modular for us to be able to make these repairs, get it back out on course. And it looks like Adam has not shaken everything out of his system just yet. On the transition, he gets bounded up and just too much angle going to that that third outside zone, big plume of smoke as he tries to save it, but not able to. Does save the car, so he will get one more chance. Uh, that's exactly what I didn't want to do. Um, I just talked to uh, basically everything that went down with Vaughn, and it definitely gave me some clarity as to what's happening. Um, but one thing I do want to point out is I made a very similar mistake to my crash in that I knew I had way too much speed coming from outer zone one, and I intentionally tried to throw as much angle as possible and point the back of the car at the wall, bury the throttle to avoid hitting the wall. We're not fighting a mistake of me spinning out past outer zone two, we're fighting a mistake of me building way too much speed from outer zone one. Um, so speaking it through with Vaughn, what seems like it's happening is that in certain scenarios, I'm not getting as far deep in outer zone one as I want and rather than left foot brake and add a bunch of angle there, I've trained myself not to left foot brake in this car. So I'm steering towards a little bit, which pulls out angle, but doesn't drive me away from it. But the problem is being shallow in that outer zone one is building so much speed through the infield that like my body's G meter knows like, oh crap, oh crap. I'm not pointing where the car needs to be pointing. I'm gonna go into the wall if I don't point the back of it at the wall and bury the throttle. So I go into save the car and save yourself mode, which is not what you want to be doing with drifting. So the solution seems to be just getting into outer zone one exactly how I need to, and that should solve the rest of the track. Um, but I think if I can do that, everything else will just click like it has in practice. But when that scenario happens, am I just kind of going to be in mode instead of being proactive?
made the move over here with RTR last year. And obviously we see it's a capable machine. What's Adam gonna do? How's he gonna throw down? His RTR teammates are already in the top five. There he goes, Adam. He throws it in. Big gangster flick initiation. Ends up coming up shallow on that third outer zone, but does keep it sideways. Looks like Adam LZ will be seeing competition. He's struggling with that transition going from, you know, you see him going from two to three. See the car grip up and take in that shallower line. Yeah, a little bit of a scary moment there. Right. A lot of angle leaving outside zone two. You can see he does get out to that first outside zone pretty well. A quick snap back around in the middle of the course caused him to miss outside zone two and three completely. But he's going to get a scored run here, and that's the most important thing as he makes his way into tomorrow's competition. Great projects going on. Here's Adam LZ coming in. He will get that score. Jared, obviously, it's on the lower side, but yep. he is in competition. That's the most important part. Yep, he gets a score on the board, 66.3. Before I do my little talk to you, you have anything to say? Yeah. What? I just need you to calm your flick down just a little bit. We need to clean up outer one, a little more angle at outer one, and when you flick it back through outer two, I just need you to just clean it up just a little bit because you're you're like you're doing like an fu flick and we need to just slow it down a bit more because you gotta not just rotate you gotta rotate and still go out yeah so we just need to tighten up just a bit i think uh you know originally i was really excited i was gonna go try to do the best run ever and then when over the radio i heard that there was like 33 people and then someone in front of me zeroed i was like all right i need to not do that and i need to just get points on the board so like my focus changed a little bit from trying to like use this as like a perfect run to just do something, which isn't as fun, but. Well, you did it, yeah, and tomorrow counts. So yeah. we got some laps of practice tomorrow. We'll make a couple changes to help you that you have a little bit more to lean on, but you need to meet us in the middle and just slow that flick down a little bit. Yep, so are we are we doing the power steering change or are we leaving, it's leaving with what we call. got? I mean, honestly, like I'm not really running into much issues and okay. I know that they've been like fighting some little weird things and it's, I'd rather keep it the same. It's different. So if you're happy, I, I suggest we keep it. You don't, to me, it doesn't look like you're getting it. I've seen like a little bit of shake. It's super high angle, like yeah. once or twice, but I think as long as you feel it's manageable, uh, I would, I would prefer you stick with it instead of throwing another new thing in. No, I'm with that, but I do want the, the other new thing that we unlock. Give me the other new thing. The other new thing, which yeah. will, I, I didn't say exactly what it was, but it will help in the situations where the car was feeling super loose. Not that that was a mistake on any of those laps, but it is something that I've always fought, like, fought with these cars. Yeah, yeah. Your timing, the timing's just a little bit off today. Yeah. That's all. Like, I feel like you're just not feeling one with the car right now, and you know, it's been a full off season, and you know we had one test day, you know, so I'm stoked we're in the show, and we'll keep working through it tomorrow. It's easy. I was uh, I was feeling real good in practice, but that crash had me shook. Yeah, I know like, you didn't. Uh, like physically and mentally. Yeah, how you feeling right now? You right? Uh, yeah, you know. A little cloudy. Good enough to put a lap down. You look great. Thanks. You look great. I appreciate it. <laughs>
practicing in for warm up. Had a couple little issues, mainly the nitrous. We had a little issue with, so it wasn't working. And the problem is when nitrous is armed and the nitrous isn't working, not only do you lose the 400 shot and make 800 horsepower, the car is still firing fuel into the engine, which makes it run super rich. So instead of making like 800 when the nitrous is armed and it's not working, it's probably making like 500, 600, and it was just throwaway run. Um, a couple other little mechanical things the guys are going over, but hoping I can get one solid chase before comp. Definitely not where I want to be. Uh, the first two runs, I was struggling with mechanicals a little bit. The last run, I felt really good. It, it was probably my first proper chase of the weekend. A uh, few little like mistakes that I need to clean up around the outer two area, but uh, I was able to stay kind of where I wanted to be and felt pretty comfortable with the placement of the car. Uh, however, though, going to the last corner, uh, clutch stopped disengaging, so the handbrake was stalling the car, so I couldn't get on gas soon enough. Not a huge issue. Like I still was able to complete the run, and it didn't look that bad. However hoping that it is not in need of a clutch change because getting that done before my battle uh, against Chelsea is going to be really tight uh, in terms of the time allotted. So fingers crossed it's not and we can go have some fun. Oh, that's too much roll. Oh my gosh. Come on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, what you call it? I'm adjusting, I'm adapting. Let's see. Oh, I almost got the assist. Are you going to blame on that guy? Yeah. Hey, you bro. Yeah. Try and get him with the old Mario Kart trip. Get suited up here. What's uh, what So uh, Chelsea Denofa, Adam LZ, Chelsea initiates Pennzoil, BC Racing, Mustang RTR Spec 5, FD, big angle there from Chelsea, gets all the way out there, Adam LZ, there he takes that shallower line, Jump, doesn't get all the way out, Adam taking the shallower line, so Mustang versus Mustang, around that final inner cliff, a great run by both the drivers. Rockstar Energy Drink booth, the official energy drink of Formula Drift, as this is the Rockstar Energy Top 32. Adam LZ now out front, Chelsea Denofa in that chase position. Adam, yo, oh. using all the track. You see him shredding some skin there. Kind of struggles, and that was, that was the point where, he, I mean, he is just absolutely throwing a brick on that gas pedal. Adam LZ hammers down. Chelsea kind of checks up there. He's like, where, Adam, where are you going, bro? Yeah. He just took <laughs> off, man. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, chasing down a car that's going into, like, let's say, a tire barrier or a wall is uh, very intimidating for the chase car. So it's um, it's a throttle car. You just got to hammer down, man, and, and you just got to kind of point and shoot. And just talking to talking to James Dean and just knowing Chelsea just over the years. Here we go. Slide them left for Chelsea Nofa, right for Adam LZ, and Chelsea Denofa gets the win. Denofa advances on Adam LZ who uh, got in the fight with the wall. The wall always won. Yeah. I fought the wall, and the wall but won. It always does. Hey, my deck lid didn't break. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty flexy. You were sent into the moon on that entry. Dude, I, so <laughs> I'm having Ray look at the data. Both times on the run-up, I don't know if it's because I was getting like overexcited and short shifting it. I pulled the car out of the nitrous band, so it just dead hooked on the run-up. Oh, so shit. like before, I'd be blown through the tires. Right. So I bet I was probably entering like ten miles faster. Dude, that was that was probably the fast entry of the weekend, right there. Was, was, you know. I mean, hey, I didn't crash hey, you the had car. To send it. You know who you're running. You're talking against. about the half second lag. So on the first run chasing him, I think it might have just been me short shifting. Um, and then you have about a half a second. Well, I, I didn't. I felt like I didn't feel the nitrous at all on the straightaway. But once I was in the corner, it was there. Like yeah. I was. I get terrified because if it's not there in the corner, that's when it's oh. Sh yeah. On the straightaway, it's not a big deal. It just screws with timing a little bit. Right. I think short shifting it. Like usually, I could just blow the tires off and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. But now that there's more rubber, I get a lot of gear out more. Starts the fog. Plus, you were in got a battle chest with an open yeah. mode back here on the in this car. So. Well, it's it's tough because like you're you know everyone goes through so slow through the chicane, so you're like sitting there waiting, yeah. and then they take off and you're like, oh, sh I gotta get into my drive yeah, yeah. here, and then like. You did pretty good on your chase. Did I? I didn't watch it yet. I mean, it was. So, I felt like if it I. It could have been cleaned up, but it was. It was pretty good. I think on the chase. So I think he would have won regardless. But I think on the chase, if I didn't mess up on the lead, the that bigger gap in the beginning wouldn't have been established, and I could have done a better chase. Right. I don't. I still think he probably could have won, but. Um, Never know. Actually, hitting the tire wall is all part of the plan to phase him. Yeah, you phased him up, dude. These, Look at that. These S six fifty. These S650s, yo, it's crazy because usually you hit a tire roll and it sucks you right in. Yeah. Somehow it just like the car is completely unaffected. Yeah, well, because it all all this Kevlar in the back just folds in. But Chelsea, you at all your parts, if you watch, all your parts hit Chelsea's door. You split his door. Did all I? the parts hit his door. That was actually another part of my plan. <laughs> you're the, well, you had the banana up on his uh, tire before, so now you're throwing turtle shells at him. Like no, so I think actually what happened was, you know, the, the run before someone went into those tires there, I think they moved them actually farther out on the race line. That's what it was. Yeah, they, yeah, had they didn't put it back right. Yeah. Yeah. Put it down dry and I mean, look, it's it's not it's not what I wanted, but given the circumstances, like, I'm it's happy. It's been a challenging weekend. I'm, I'm happy enough, you know? I'm like, happy. We progressed, and I think, obviously, you're going to have one round break, but then you'll have three in a row, and I think, you know, you got some really good taste of the changes we made in the off season, and I think we just, you know, and to be fair, like, I feel like I, this has never been my track, you know, like, it's, there's so much, like, for such a simple track, there's so much to learn, especially having, like, the blind corners. Yeah. And, like, such big sweepers, like, even though it seems easy because they're such long corners. Yeah, it's very If tiny. you mess up once, like, you are weighed so heavily, if you make any sort of correction, yeah. that it's, like, kind of set it and yeah. forget it. And in turn one's everything, so if you don't nail that perfect, then you are kind of chasing it, so... I think we made good progress, and I think my biggest thing with you is like I'm happy with like you had you showed a lot of tenacity this weekend. Like there's been like challenges. We had a couple of issues with the car. Obviously, a pretty well, one of your biggest crashes ever. Yeah. And you still just stayed in it. And when you had the pressure on you just now at Chelsea, like I feel like you performed pretty well. Your biggest downside of the weekend though is that we just weren't able to get turn one consistent. Yeah. That was it. So you were never really able to get in the groove, and it was like something new every time, and that just doesn't work. You know yeah. the deal. Yeah, you, you give a little bit somewhere, you gotta take it from somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. But we still got the fastest car. Just... Good job, dude. No, you're not stoked, but I mean, it's constant progress, I'm man. stoked enough, you know? It could have it could have gone way not good. Sure. Like, you know? I mean, you could have been in that tire wall. So I was terrified. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we talked about it before the video, but the clutch, I think like one of the discs warped, so it was like starting to drag a little bit. It was fine off the line, but my biggest fear was that once it got some heat in it, especially like coming around, if I had to do any handbrake correction behind it, and it stalled the car right on turn three. Was it fine though? It was fine. Like okay. I could feel it dragging, 
Like, but it wasn't enough to stall the car. But if it stalled it there on that corner, there's yeah. nothing I could have done. Yeah. So I had that in my head, but I did my best to not focus on it. Yeah. Dude, that shit was gnarly. You dismantled your car into my window. I, I, so I had right full of data to see what the was going on. Both in my chase and my lead, I, uh, I drove like I think I got overexcited and I drove the car like short shifted and fell out of the nitrous. You were, but you were hauling ass. Exactly. I was like. <laughs> And Dude, he's gone, and like, and I throw it in, I'm like, oh, I'm two cars back, but like, I'll gain after Outer Zone 1, it's fine. And then you were like, on lock stop, shaking wheel like crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, he's going in so hard. And the tire, you caught the tire wall first. I don't know how it's going to pull hard. Because you caught just the tire wall, just at the deep amount that took everything off, and it just left it there where I was, and my, it broke my door from your bumper and trunk and everything. I'm really stoked that I didn't pull us both into the, into that wall. I was waiting because I was like, as soon as you flicked in, I was like, no, no way. And I'm like, if he does pull it off, he's gonna transition super early. Like, well, you know, usually you blow through the tires, and that allows you to get the swoop. The flip. I didn't ever you just blow went through the tires as fast as you could go. The same thing happened behind you, but it, for whatever reason, I think it messed up my timing. So like, you established like a two-car gap on me there too, but that was just because I was kind of. It's that chicane. It hurts the chase driver right yeah. now because you got to go so slow through it. Like I hit a cone. And I think actually like, hit the the light, I guess. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. I was just like scared because when you were going, like I know how fast these cars are. So like as soon as you got through the chicane, I'm like, I gotta get into my drive gear. So I just blew through. So I'm like, rah, rah, rah. but like, you were there on the chase. I mean, you chopped lines some, but you were there. No, I mean, for all for all intents and purposes, with the with the weekend that I had, I'm content. I'm not stoked. I'm not like. Like, yeah! At least you went out overdriving and not underdriving. Yeah. No, it was cool. I'm sure, hopefully there'll be a cool photo of me just stuffing half my oh, rear bumper. Oh, see the video, the overhead cam yeah. just shows your bumper stop and you keep going and then I just run into all your Do you think they'll ever make us run window nets from like body parts flying into other cars? Uh, that's why we have visors though. True. But I can't, I can imagine. I was checking my visor for scratches because I straight up, in my first time in my life, I was like coming around the turn, and I, all this, this giant whole parachute of shit was coming out. I was like, I closed my eyes. I was like, oh, I'm gonna die. I didn't know if it was the tire wall. I didn't know if it was your bumpers. And then I saw your wing like reflecting into my face. I'm stoked you're able to finish the run. It would have sucked if like threw a tire in you and it like spun you out. It was barely. I barely finished the run. Gonna be the tough. Barely. Like it was questionable. I was like, man, we might have to go again because I barely chased you. Damn. Yeah. Well, I was wondering, they took a, little, a long time to judge. I'm like, no, I definitely lost. I had, I couldn't see or go, I got stuck at Outer Zone 1. That was the problem. Like, uh, I'm, obviously I'm happy I didn't zero, but like, I feel like if someone goes in the tires that much, it should be a zero. I figured it was unchaseable. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way it's not unchaseable because I chase anything. And I was like, <laughs> I was like where am I going to go? Where is he? If, like, if Chelsea shuts it down on a run, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ever shut it down. Even when my shit's I'm I'm missing wheels, we're good. <laughs> They'll have someone in front that's like, their car's half broken, on fire, like barely drifting, they'll still be in it. Well, you never want to put it in their hands. Yeah. I'll make that decision. It's more fun that way, too. It is. That was reckless. That was funny. Yeah. I was like, holy yeah. shit, gnarly. Yeah. 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 tire marks on the shot. We're so canister. lucky that this thing just folds in like that. Have you seen the replay? Yeah, oh yeah. The whole half the car folded. And it just stays, and then I run it over. Still got tire <laughs> I know. These G2s are great. They do, they last forever. <laughs> Especially at Long Beach. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I want to give a massive shout out to Jared Dienda, world's finest announcer that also got everyone beer and burgers. A very nice thing uh, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Formula Drift and a great way to end the day. Definitely a challenging weekend, not only for myself, but for the rest of the team. Everyone stepped up. We've got a killer team. Some of the most talented dudes in the world working on our cars, keeping us on track. And some rounds go great, some rounds are tough. And, uh, you know, I'm super proud of Chelsea and James. They both shredded the wheels off their cars. I still got stuff to learn, and I just got to keep reminding myself that the whole reason that I'm doing this is to learn and is to absorb knowledge. I never came out and said I'm the most badass mother driving drift cars, and I think that I'm going to go dominate the whole Pro 1 field. I went into this knowing that it would be a huge learning experience and that I would absorb information from some of the most talented people on the planet, and that continues to hold true. So, uh, just wanted to get that out there, and thank you guys for watching the video, thank you guys for all the support. It does mean a lot, and there's a lot of people that don't support, but those people don't matter, we won't even talk about them. Actually, Mike, you can bleep out part of that, enough to make context, but not so much so that it doesn't make context, and then people get confused and think that I'm saying some bad word, and then start another thing that I said something wrong in a video that didn't make sense and I'll the world. Just, like, sense of yep. Good night. Bye. Good night.